The art of a good interview, such a critical skill to have when producing video, and the result of your interviews can often mean the make or break of your videos. So why do so many people just launch into an interview and shoot from the hip, or without really knowing what they want to get? G'day, Ben Amos here from Engage Video Marketing, and on this channel, I share tips, tricks, and strategies to help you be more effective with your video marketing. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos as they release. In my over 12 years as a video producer and after producing over 150 interview podcast episodes, let me tell you, I've learned a thing or two about interviewing people on camera, and in particular, how to ensure that you get what you need for your edit. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my eight tips for conducting better video video interviews so that you know you got what you need. And tip number one is be prepared. That means do your research. Obviously know who it is that you're interviewing, but also understand what it is that you wanna get out of this interview in order to produce the video that you wanna produce. A great tip here is to actually, where you can, do a pre interview, which means getting on the phone or speaking to this person face to face before you rock up with any video cameras in order to make sure that you really understand what it is that you're trying to get out of them. You also want to make sure that you're planning your questions. It's no good just to shoot from the hip, as I said, and just make it up as you go along. By planning your questions, you can also structure the flow of your interview so that you can get to the meat of the interview at the right time when people are feeling relaxed in front of the camera. And finally, to be prepared, you really need to know the goal for your interview. So what is it that you're trying to achieve from conducting this interview? What nugget of information do you want to extract from this person? Or what are those sound bites that you actually want to get in order to use them in your video? If you're not clear on the goal, then you potentially don't know what it is that you need and whether or not you've got it or not when you wrap up and head home. So carrying on from that, tip number two is where you can build rapport with your interviewee. Nobody's comfortable on camera and it's your job as an interviewer to make them feel comfortable as much as you can. A great tip is to actually have conversation with people while you're setting up. Just naturally get to know them, ask them about what's going on in their life right now. Start to help them feel relaxed and help them get to know you and humanize the relationship that you have with them. Even when the camera's being set up and the lights are being sorted and the sound is being organized, you wanna be maintaining that conversation and building that rapport so that when the camera is recording, it's a natural transition into conducting the interview without someone feeling like suddenly they need to be on. And a little bonus tip here is don't make a big deal out of pressing that record button. You don't wanna be saying lights, camera, action, and then launch into an interview. Nobody's gonna feel comfortable that way. Just press that record button, keep on having that conversation, and then slowly lead into your specific interview questions. And in many cases, they won't even know that the interview started, and that is ideal. A person much smarter than me once said that the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. And so tip number three is all about that, asking quality questions. Specifically, you wanna be asking open questions that invoke a detailed and thoughtful response, not closed questions. So instead of asking, did you like the product? You would ask, what did you like about the product and why? That's going to elicit a much better response from your interview. Tip number four is let the questions guide the answer. Now this is a bit of a skill to be practiced. You see, the phrasing of your question can often have a big impact on the way that the interviewee responds to your question and the words they use in their response. So when you wanna have a specific response or control the words that they use, you need to think about that in the way that you phrase your questions. For example, if you want them to actually say the name of their company in their response, then by including the name of the company in the way that you ask the question, you're subtly prompting them to respond in that way. Or if you want to encourage a specific style of response, such as the telling of a story, then you want to think about that in the way that you phrase your question. For example, instead of saying, so tell us what happened, you could say, so take me back there to the day that it happened. Tip number five is have natural curiosity. You definitely don't want to be conducting interviews just looking down at your questions and waiting to ask the next question. Instead, you want to go into it with an open mind and looking for opportunities to dive deeper where it makes sense. So you want be actively listening to the responses and then asking clarifying questions such as so tell me more about that or let's take that a bit deeper and explore that further or consider adding follow-up questions which maybe you hadn't planned for but that is often where the gold in the interview can lie tip number six 
make eye contact. Nothing is more off-putting for an interviewee than having the interviewer looking down at their notes the whole time or looking at the camera and trying to fiddle with things while they're responding to your questions. The eye contact of the interviewee is often critical in establishing trust and authenticity and keeping the viewer of the end video engaged as well. So you really want to be respectful of the interviewee's eye contact. And a bonus tip here is if you're conducting interviews where you want the interviewee to be looking straight down the lens of the camera, then consider using a tool like the VoxBox Pro, which will enable you to still be making eye contact with the interviewee whilst the interview is taking place. All right, tip number seven is avoid crosstalk. There really is nothing worse in an edit when you have to edit around or try and remove unwanted noises or sounds from an interviewer, which are impacting on the awesome take. So when you're interviewing, I want you to be nodding to show agreement or making eye contact to show that you're engaging with the interviewer, but not actually speaking. So avoid saying, uh-huh, mm, yes, okay. And those sorts of responses, which are natural in an interview situation, because it can often severely impact on the quality of the result you get for the edit. And also make sure to pause a moment after the interviewee has finished what they're saying before you ask your next question to give you options in the edit to cut that out. And tip number eight is know when you've got what you need. See, when you go into an interview with a plan and you understand the story that you're trying to tell from the interview, then you can plan for that when you're conducting the interview. Actively listening to your interviewee's responses so that you know if you've got what it is that you came for. You wanna pay attention to what was said, not necessarily when it was said, because there's a lot you can do in an edit to pull bits out and put things together, but it's important that you have got what you wanted. So if you haven't got what you wanted, then potentially you need to ask clarifying questions or rephrase the question and ask it again in a different way to try and get a different response. It's your job as an interviewer to make sure that when you wrap that interview, you know you've got the gold and you can go on from there into the edit knowing that you've got what you need. Conducting good interviews for video really is an art form and a science and absolutely it's something that you can learn and you can get better at as you do more and more interviews. And if you go into your next interview with these eight tips in mind, I guarantee that you'll be getting a better result than if you go in shooting from the hip and unprepared. So I wanna hear from you, which one of these tips resonated with you the most, or maybe you hadn't thought about before? Let me know in the comments below this video. And if you got value from this video, hit that subscribe button and join me over here in the next video where we'll go deeper into video marketing strategy for your business. See you there. And a little bonus tip here is, and a little bonus tip here is to make sure, and a little bonus tip,